Hey guys, welcome to the Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Species Spotlight. For today's Species Spotlight, I've chosen Pseudomugal Gertrudae, the spotted blue-eye rainbow, or Gertrude's rainbow, because a few of you have asked me to. They're a really fascinating little fish, petite at just over one and a quarter inch, and very easy to breed. I've set up a small hanging display so that I can show you their courtship and behavior. Generally speaking, they stay very much towards the top water, are relatively easy to feed, and extremely easy to breed. They don't have a super long lifespan, so it's important to house them properly. So pardon the cloudiness of this little tank, but I just dropped in some microworms to make them congregate to make them congregate in all the same area. You can see in the middle are males. And you can tell they're males because those pectoral fins are elongated and golden in color, much more pronounced than in the females. Now these are adult fish, so they're about maybe an inch and a quarter. The females are a little bit more petite. They're from Eastern Indonesia, the Aru Islands through Papua New Guinea and really a pretty wide range of places for collection. The vast majority of the ones that are found in the hobby are, are captive reared or farmed, so um, which, which is great because it means that they can take a really wide range of parameters. And even in the wild, you can find them from temperatures down in the 60s up to almost in the 90s. In an, in an aquarium, you want to keep them somewhere between 70 and 82. They breed a lot more readily in slightly warmer temperatures, so I tend to keep them in the high 70s. They're found in shallow, heavily vegetated creeks, small streams, or swamps. So when you're setting up your aquarium, you want a lot of surface plants and some dense areas of planting, and that gives them a lot of comfort. The majority of the fish that have those sort of upturned... Um, pelvic fins generally spend a lot of time up near the surface of the water which means they can be prone to jumping which is not my experience with this particular fish but it is known that rainbows in general will jump so a good lid would be important these guys are really ideal for a heavily planted tank with that blue lamp eye that glows and their subtle coloration the beautiful spots and their behavior they just make a fantastic choice for a planet aquarium. I've bred these in the fish room and outside. They're really pretty easy. They generally spawn every morning. Um, in the wild, they're a seasonal spawner, but in, the in an aquarium, they will spawn all year long. And the best way to do that is by either using moss or a spawning mop up near the surface or in the top third of the water. The males will chase the females and they'll drop their eggs right into the mop. You need to check it every day for the eggs or they will eat them in their fry. Their fry are super tiny, like eyelashes, but relatively easy to raise. Uh, I generally use filter squeezings for the first few days and then transition them to microworms by about day five. It takes about 10 days for the eggs to hatch. Uh, again, that'll depend on your temperature. If you're having a hard time getting the eggs to hatch, sometimes if you put them in a little jar and shake it up, it allows them to hatch. It's just a little tip for you. Now, as I mentioned in my intro, these guys have a relatively short lifespan, you know, only about 18 months. And part of the reason for that is because they do breed so readily. And again, you know, these guys can take a wide range of parameters from soft water to pretty darn hard water from cool water to very warm. In an ideal world, you would want to keep them in neutral to slightly hard water in your aquarium. So you can see that's a female right there. She doesn't have the visible pectorals. You can tell the males have those bright gold pectorals and a little bit more of a black edging to their other fins. But these guys just really are fantastic. In fact, I used them in the tank for the aquatic experience because I wanted activity up in that upper third. This little display tank is so short that you can't really see that as well. But again, for their size, these are just a really engaging fish. They can easily be intimidated by larger fish, so it's best to keep them with other small species or in a species tank if you want to breed them. But you can see they're just phenomenally gorgeous. That eye just glows.
Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the Species Spotlight. Make sure to stop by my Facebook page as well as my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my current stock list, my upcoming speaking engagements, and information on all things nano. Make sure you subscribe as well so that you don't miss any of my Tuesday tips or my Species Spotlights. Thanks, guys.